am so excited. Monday, we own a car company or two or three. That's great. <laughs> GM is ours. Yeah, on Monday. And today I got up and I heard President Obama is creating a new White House office to protect our computers. He's soon going to name a cyber czar. Ooh, that sounds good. To lead the office of cybersecurity there in the White House. He'll have he'll have somebody that only answers to him to control the security on the internet. <laughs> good. Because of the critical importance of this work, I will per personally select this official. I'll depend on this official in all matters relating to cybersecurity. And this official will have my full support and regular access to me as we confront these challenges. Good. Too bad. Too bad nobody else has any, you know, we don't have to approve him or anything. It, hey, we trust the president. He can point that person. Another czar. How many does that make now? We decided to count them up. There's the drug czar, love that. Then there's the energy and environment czar, homeland security terrorism czar, the health czar, the urban affairs czar. What the heck do they even do? The economic czar, the regulatory czar, technology czar, government performance czar, who I believe is sleeping on the job, border czar, the weapons of mass destruction policy czar, the intelligence czar, the cars are, and now the cybers are. It brings it to 14, which is more than any other president has ever had. It's almost, almost as many as Russia had in 400 years. And you know, speaking of Russia, let's talk about some of their crazy, wacky, famous czars. First, there was Ivan the Terrible, crowned czar or emperor in 1547. He sees large sections of Moscow as his personal property, and then he gave it to his supporters and friends. <laughs> Nothing like that's happening. But for his rivals, Ivan used torture, exile, and execution to repress them. He personally led troops against one city, destroyed it, executed thousands of his own people. Historians today still question his sanity and mine. How about Catherine the Great? She had a reputation as an, an enlightened despot. And she promised reform for pre peasants, which was fantastic he, until they decided to, you know, rise up. And then she crushed the rebellion and executed the leader and, and many of the other people. And, but she strengthened the oppressive laws, which was good. I don't know if she had a czar czar doing that for her. Then there was Alexander III, known for strict censorship, including police supervision of intellectuals. He was also a big fan of oppressing the Jews. He, he, he took all those Jews, they're going to live in a certain area. We weren't allowed to enter some professions and then he killed a large number of them under his reign this is fantastic I mean, no it is seriously i mean i'm not saying that we're like russia i'm not saying obama's gonna kill anybody but uh can we can we stop the music can we at least come up with some other title than czar can we maybe remember that czar wasn't a good thing we use the internet to run our energy, finance, transportation networks, everything. You know, everything we buy every day, a lot of it's coming off of the internet. It all has to be protected. I know that. Who's supposed to be protecting it? And they're not doing it. Let's fire that guy. All of Obama's czars are supposed to have a direct line to the president. Really? Who's approving that? Where is that coming from? I mean, besides the progressive idea of administration that answers to no one, why add another level of government to streamline the government? That doesn't make any sense. Apparently, the National Security Council and the President's National Economic Council have butted heads. Balancing security with industry, you know, they can't get along, you know. It's kind of like my five-year-old and my three-year-old. They got a problem with that, too, and so I tell them, you know, usually, well, it's every couple of days, knock it off, you two, and share. See? That's what has to happen. You got to grow up, realize somebody else is in charge of cybersecurity, and learn to share. Naming another czar is another way to put a happy face on a problem without solving the problem. And you know what? I don't think it's about that problem at all. That is about growing the government beyond your wildest imagination. A lot of presidents have done this, nothing like Barack Obama, but they've all been collecting czars over the years. Let's stop. We have our own czar, but it goes by a different name here. Oh, there he is. President. 
Remember in history, the czars were absolute rulers who answered to no one. That's not a good thing. These czars will answer to no one. Well, no, I take that back. To one person. Where in the Constitution does it say the word czar or anything like it? It doesn't. So instead of adding more bureaucracy, what do you say? Give it a whirl. Let's get back to basics. All right.